Hello there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Doug and I have yet another fountain pen video for you today. Today we're going to look at a vintage, well it might be vintage, it's between 20 and 40 years old, I believe. I can't get any more certain than that, but it is a beautiful fountain pen and it is the Schaefer Targa. Isn't that gorgeous? Let's take a look at it right now. <laughs> Here we are back with the Schaefer Targa. This particular Targa uh, was loaned to me by a friend. It is uh, part of his father's collection of fountain pens. My research on this tells me that Targas were made in over 70 finishes and 120 different options in terms of sizes and finishes. So it was a very popular model. Uh, this particular finish is called, let me get this right, the model 1030 Brown Thuya, that's T-H-U-Y-A, classic. And it came in a slim line as well, but this is the classic size. And it sports a 23 karat gold electroplated finish. So all the appointments are 23 karat gold and a 14 karat gold nib. Now look at that nib. Isn't that gorgeous? This is one of those inlaid nibs uh, that uh, came out, I believe, with the Triumph, the Schaefer Triumph, and you'll find it on a number of other models as well. It has a long section. So the section goes from here all the way to the tip, and it tapers down quite dramatically and quite elegantly as well. And this is a cartridge converter or a cartridge pen. Uh, this takes standard Schaefer cartridges. I just picked these up at Staples and they fit perfectly. And it takes the Schaefer cartridge converter as well. So a modern cartridge converter will fit in this pen. This particular model was made between 1978 and 1994. So I can't be more precise than it was made between those years. There are no serial numbers on this. There's not even a marking on here that tells me what the nib uh, size is. I'm thinking it's a medium. I um, spent some time on this pen. I've had it for uh, about three weeks now and I've done some research on it and um, I've done some cleaning up as well. It was fairly caked with ink and it uh, probably hadn't been inked up in 10, 15 years, something like that. And so I was quite excited to see if I could clean it out. And I took the section off and soaked it in water for a couple of days. And after that, I ran a lot of clear water through it, dried it out, ran water through it over and over again. It took about two or three days to get all of the residual ink out of it. And then I set about polishing it up. So what I did was I took some micro mesh to the nib, uh, which got out some of the very fine scratches that were in there. And then I took some Meguiar's Mirror Glaze number nine, Swirl Remover 2.0. This is for car finishes, and it is silicone free, and it is a very, very fine abrasive. And I polished the plastic on the section and the nib uh, quite, quite a lot. Uh, I think I probably did it uh, maybe two or three times where I polished it and polished it and wiped it down. Then I took that same swirl remover to the body and the cap. And because this is an electroplate, it's a lot sturdier than any gold plate. And so I was very careful not to lose any gold, but uh, it is fairly sturdy, whereas gold plate would come off immediately. This was uh, quite well intact. So let's look at the, the parts of this pen and the features of it. 
and uh, then I'm going to do some size comparisons and some dimensions for you, and then we're going to do a writing sample. First off, it's a fairly slim pen, even though there is a slimline version of this. I can't imagine being any slimmer than this. This is about 11 millimeters, and it's barrel-shaped. It tapers only very slightly, just a millimeter or so towards the tail. Uh, both the tail, which uh, I guess is called a tassie, and the finial have this uh, gold cap with a black insert. I don't know whether that's plastic or not. Um, there is a gold band on the bottom of the cap and on the bottom of the body. You can see there. And when they go together, when you've got the pen back together again, it makes a nice broad band that's split in the middle. The clip is very springy and very usable. It is, has this split design. And all the targets seem to have this. There's some special models with some jewels down here. And that uh, ubiquitous Schaefer white dot, which used to represent lifetime warranty. The pen is a slip cap, and it is very interesting that it doesn't click into this section. It clicks into this clutch. This is that gold ring just above the section where the section begins. It's a small raised, you can see that or not, small raised gold band that clicks into a small clutch assembly inside there. And so it get, you feel the friction starting as it begins to rub into the section, and then it has a positive click. It posts, and it posts very deeply and very securely. And the pen is back-weighted slightly because of that heavy finial there and the clip. I believe it back-weights it, but not to the point where it would impair your writing. It actually feels very comfortable in the hand, either posted or unposted. And that section, because it is so beautifully tapered, you can hold it almost anywhere. Now, this is a fairly slim pen for me, but because of that long tapered section, you can write with this pen in almost any orientation. And I just can't get over the beauty of that 14 karat gold Schaefer nib. It says Schaefer, and then it says USA, and there's a registered trademark 14K, and on this side it says 585, which I believe is the representation of the gold content. Okay, I'm also going to uh, do a little section on the history of the Schaefer Targa. Uh, there was a website which I will link to in my description uh, that is just a wealth of information about everything Schaefer and especially the Targa and the hundreds of different varieties of this particular pen. And uh, there will be some uh, timestamps in the description so you can uh, fast forward past that if you want to get right to the writing sample. So let's look at some size comparisons and some measurements. And I'll be right back with you with a writing sample. Now for just a short diversion to the history of the Schaefer Targa. The Schaefer Targa was introduced as a Targa by Schaefer in 1976, around the same time that Schaefer was moved to one of its parent company Textron's divisions, called the Eaton Paper Company. Schaefer Eaton devoted much attention to the sleek new model which featured the inlaid nib Schaefer first introduced with the Schaefer PFM, or Pen for Men model, and later with the Schaefer Imperial, amongst others. 
The Targa was the company's flagship pen from 1976 until the late 1990s, eventually offered in 70 different finishes and two body styles, the slimline model being introduced in 1982. The Targa was in production for 23 years and has become highly collectible with the huge array of variations of finishes and range of nibs available. Although most Targas come with a 14 karat gold nib, there was a lower priced stainless steel model with a stainless steel nib. A cursory search of eBay will yield a plethora of models and styles of Targas ranging from $1,000 to $50 depending on the condition and the style. If you like slimline gold nib pens, the Targa could be a collector's rabbit hole for you. Okay, we're back with the writing sample of the Schaefer Targa. And I think I'm going to write with this unposted. So this is the Schaefer Targa. And this one is model 1030, uh, and it has a 14 karat gold nib. The uh, color of this pen in the 1030 model is called a brown Thuya Ronce. And the closest I can find out, uh, sorry, Ronce Lac. Yeah, sorry, L A Q U E. And the closest I can find in terms of a translation from the French is that this brown Ronce Lac is a like a burled walnut um, lacquer. And the pen was actually, uh, had 14 coats of, of hand rubbed lacquer applied to it. And that's how you get the depth of, of that finish. It's quite lovely actually. The ink today is the standard Schaefer blue. So let's check the wetness here. This is a very wet pen and it writes a, a fairly medium line and now and then I'm getting some some skipping and some hard starts. It doesn't take a little, see, like that. It doesn't take much to get it going again. Uh, in terms of flexing, that's the no pressure, and it does flex, but it's fairly stiff, so I wouldn't push it. It's not a flex nib. And let's listen to it. So it's very lovely. I've got to say that because of the beauty of this nib, I was expecting that it was beautiful but not writable. I didn't think it would be practical. But as soon as I put that nib to paper, no smoothing, no adjustment, no tiny adjustment, and it was just like, wow, that's like glass. So this is a beautifully writing pen. And I do like it writing with it unposted rather than posted, but again, you can do both. So it's very smooth. And very wet. In terms of reverse writing, no. Um, it's really, really scratchy. I don't even want to continue. Wow, that's very scratchy. It's tearing up the paper. In terms of some fast writing, Uh, I don't 
don't know quite what's causing the the hard starts. It can't be drying out because uh, it happens while I'm writing in the next word. So uh, I'm not sure what that is, but a beautiful fountain pen nonetheless. So that is the Schaefer Targa, uh, circa 1978 through 1994, somewhere in there. A beautiful fountain pen. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you want to be informed of new videos when they come out, please hit that bell and you'll get a notification. And in the meantime, as always, I thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.